Hello guys, welcome to a new series of video where I will build a web server using Python and Flask. Today I will show how to create a new project, create the structure, add the dependencies using poetry, add blueprints to group endpoints and handle exceptions. If you're ready, click on the subscribe button and let's go. This video belongs to a new playlist where I will build a complete backend with Python and Flask. Flask is a micro framework to create multiple APIs to deserve content. It is a micro framework because by default it contains the necessary to respond to HTTP requests. But it can easily be extended to accept the database connections, authentication, caching, front-end content, streaming and more. Let's start. I will create the folder to start my project and initialize it with poetry. Backend will be the name of my project, the name of the root package. Then add the Flask dependency. It will pick the latest version by default. It's okay for the moment. I will make another video about the usage of poetry. I will now open it with PyCharm. In the root folder, I can have a readme file with the documentation, a test folder with the unit tests, a setup.py with the configuration to package and deploy the application, and, as told before, the root package. And inside the root package, as in all the Python packages, the init.py. Here I will create and configure the Flask application. I can also have some modules at the root level as the configuration, the inner packages, and I can have a main.py file to run the application. The alternative to the main.py file is to run the application directly with the flask command, but I prefer to use only Python. Let's start by editing the init.py to create and configure the flask application. That's all. I can also configure the login here, the database, the static URL or other. But for the moment, let it be like that. And now the main.py, which we'll call this method. The host parameter is from where the requests are accepted. By default, I only accept requests from my local host. If I want to accept requests from anywhere, I must replace it by 0.0.0.0. Now I will create some endpoints to request. I use JSONify to translate a dictionary to a JSON content type. Let's see both results. To start my app, I must first enter into my poetry shell, then run my module. An alternative is to tell poetry the command to run. I could also have started it with Flask, but I will need to export the Flask app environment variable. Let's request now my endpoints. Here I have the OK.
and here I have my users with the content type JSON. I currently have the content type for the users endpoint, but as I didn't specify anything for the health check, I have the text content type. I can also override the HTTP code of the response just by appending the HTTP code to the returned data. Let's try it with another endpoint while creating a user, while reading a JSON body from the request. This way, I only return an empty response with the HTTP code 204. Or I can return my JSON content with the HTTP code 201. Here is my HTTP code. Using request.json, I must ensure that the incoming body is in JSON format. Otherwise, an exception will be raised. If I want to intercept whatever format I want, I can use request.data. If I need headers, request.headers. Request.method for the HTTP method. Request.files for the uploaded files. Request.args for the query string and more. Okay, this starts to be pretty fine, but if my application grows, I must ensure that the endpoints don't overlap. I must factorize the endpoints. To do that, I will use blueprints. I will first separate all my routes into separated models. And when starting my Flask application, I must register those blueprints. Using the blueprints, I can group my endpoints by prefixes easily. I can also configure some default behavior by blueprint as the returned templates for static content and handling errors. Let's create another blueprint to intercept the exception and return a custom message. And don't forget to register the blueprint.
And now each time an exception is raised or an exception which inherits this class is raised, it will be cocked by this blueprint and the custom message will be returned. If I want a different behavior for different exception classes, I add another error handler for other exceptions. If the exception is not found, it will be handled by this method. Otherwise, it will be handled by the other method, which is the generic one. Let's recap what I've done. I've initialized the project with poetry and added the Flask dependency. I've created the init module where I've created and configured the Flask application. I've created the main module where I start the application. I've created the root and the root packages with the health check and the user's endpoint. I've added the blueprints for each endpoint with a prefix. I've created the error handler to catch the not found exception and the rest of the exceptions. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, click on the thumbs up, subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye!